So just last week, I was working on a customer project based on the ESP32, and they had an existing prototype that they sent me. So the software was done, everything was good. They just needed me to redesign the hardware. And once I finished that up, I needed a way to program the new prototypes with that same software from the existing prototype. Now, instead of bothering them and asking them for the software, what libraries, all that stuff, or even a bin file, I decided to try out something different, which was to take their existing prototype they sent me and read out from flash memory that bin file and then program the new prototypes. And this worked, and I thought it'd make kind of a cool video. So this might be useful for that exact thing, or maybe, you know, you, you want to back up a design um, and because we're reading out the entire contents from flash memory that's also you know your Wi-Fi credentials the encryption keys all of that stuff this is also very useful for duplicating ESP32 boards like you know for the trig boards here for example you might be installing like 20 of these all with the same Wi-Fi credentials and everything else so you could just take a backup of one and then duplicate them. You know, I don't know. There's probably a lot of different use cases for this, but there's also uh, a major security concern here. So in, like for production, this could be a major problem because, you know, somebody with the skills could read out your bin file and then, you know, copy your product. Or worse, they could figure out the keys or the Wi-Fi credentials from that bin file. So we'll probably in a future video talk about encrypting the flash memory on there and then try this thing again here where we're reading out the flash content. But anyway, you know how this YouTube channel works. You know, when I do something that I think might be useful to you, I make a video about it. So let's go ahead and get started. And I've made videos in the past on how to write to the flash memory directly from the command line using ESP tool. So this is very similar because in here is also a command to read flash. So we're just going to do basically the same thing just in reverse. And this can be kind of fun too because we may not know what the ESP32 is, specifically what memory is, is installed. You know, like here on the HUSA board, they actually have it printed right on the board. It's a 4 megabyte flash. And from the Arduino IDE, you'll see we have several memory options here. So if you're trying to copy the entire contents of the flash memory, but you don't know the size, you might not copy everything out. So that's why it's important to know what the flash is. And there's a way we can read that out as well. So first though, let's assume that you know what the flash size is. And in order to do this, you will need to have the ESP32 core installed. I'm assuming that you've been able to do this and program ESP32s from the Arduino IDE. So you have that installed, meaning that if you went to tools here, uh, you would be able to select ESP32 boards. And we're going to use the Arduino IDE to cheat a little bit here to set things up. So uh, let's actually just go in here. You can select an ESP32 dev module and just pick a couple random settings here. It really doesn't matter for what we're doing. And then I'm going to just take a USB to serial converter here plug it in without an ESP32 installed because I want uh, this to fail. So what I'm going to do is just select that and let's refresh that. Go back down to port. So I just plugged that one in and it appeared right here. We're going to hit upload. Obviously it's going to fail because there's nothing there. And you see we've got the verbose output turned on which is important. Preferences and both compile and upload are clicked there, which is important because we need this last line here. So I'm gonna take that last line, copy it out, and just open up a notepad and paste it in here because now we can take that and modify it so that it works with read flash here as the command. So you see there in the read flash command, we are calling up ESP tool, the port, baud rate, read flash, and we need to know the memory size for this. And like I said, we're going to start with the Adafruit Husa board because this is known. It's printed right on the board that it's a four megabyte flash. And uh, we'll be able to set that up and read out to a bin file. So let's do that now. So let's copy some stuff out here. Right there is where ESP tool is. Okay, and I'm going to copy out the port and baud rate. Obviously, 
the HUSA will not use this, ES this USB to serial converter, so let's plug in the Adafruit board now, and let's look at what the port was on this. So back up to tools. We don't want to hit upload because that would defeat the purpose of this. We would just overwrite the program we're trying to read out. Okay, and the new one that popped up is this one down. So let's type that in. Okay, cool. So we've got that. Now we can put the command in, which is read flash. And then we have to specify the address range. So it'll be from 0 to 0 x which is in hexadecimal. We're going to talk about this a lot here, but for now, for a 4 meg chip, it's 4 with 5 zeros. And then the bin file, which we're just going to call adafruit.bin. Okay, we're on a Mac here, so let's launch terminal. And I'm going to copy that line out, paste it in, and let her rip. See what happens. Cool, there it goes. So you see here, connected, it knows it's the ESP32, um, and then the baud rate was changed, it's reading it in, and you're going to possibly see some failures in here, uh, which would likely be due to the baud rate, and actually, for the sake of this video, I'm right now just doing this quickly to get you up and running, but what I'm going to do after we do this with the HUSA board is take um, an actual... ESP32 that's loaded with something with a bunch of credentials that's doing something uh, off of the trig board here and load it onto a brand new ESP32 straight from Espresso, totally blank, and prove to you that we're actually doing a full duplication of the flash memory here. Okay, cool. So we've read all of the flash memory out to that bin file. Let's go and see. And you see that we're operating at this directory here, Kevin Dara, which is my home directory here. And there it is, adafruit.bin. Cool. So now you have an exact copy of what's on this ESP32. Now let's write it back. Well, actually, we already know how to do that because we've copied it out up here. So let's just take this entire line right here, paste it down here. And what's cool about this is that what we can do is we know we have to change the baud rate. Because we're just going to write this back to the same board here just for the sake of this video. Okay, I'm going to delete a bunch of stuff out here. And right over here is the command write flash, okay, with some parameters. We don't care about too much, but we're going to write it at address 0 because we're going to write over the entire flash memory because we copied out the entire flash memory. So we're going to start at address 0 and then write the entire thing. Okay, then where the bin file is, I'm just going to right click and on a Mac we can hit option to copy out the path. And then paste that right there. And it's going to write that whole thing back to address 0. I'm going to copy this out now, paste it in, and let it rip. Cool. So there we have it. So that is reading the flash memory out and then writing it back. Now this is all just to get you up and running quickly, but let's actually do something cool here. Okay, so now we're really going to get into the weeds of things. We've got a trig board here. Let's pretend that we have no idea what the flash memory is here. I don't think it's actually even written anywhere on the shield there, on the case here of the ESP32. So let's pretend we have no idea what it is and we're doing some forensics here. We want to pull the flash memory from this board here. Let's get a battery. So what we can do is actually go and read the flash ID. So let's do that next and read out what the flash memory size is. Okay, so now we're using that USB to serial converter. So we're back to that port. And then we're going to put in the flash ID command. Cool. Now we'll go ahead and put that into terminal here. And the trig board, we have to wake up, so I'll press and hold the wake button here. Okay, cool. So detected flash size is 16 megabytes. Pretty cool. Now, this is a little tricky here to 
understand. And when you look at this and, you know, you see the two, like, okay, two megabytes, two. Okay, that's easy. Four and four. That seems to make sense. But it's actually not all that straightforward. So what you need to do with, with these sort of things is always go to the data sheets. But um, we don't know. We're doing forensics here. Now, this is a, you know, a spy flash chip, so we can go and pull some data sheets uh, like I found this here, and I'll have a link to it down below, but this is the same kind of spy flash chip that's in the ESP32 here, what they use. Um, and we'll look at a data sheet. Let's first, though, look at the 32 megabit. Now, they're showing it here in megabit, because even if I go to the tools menu, I think they show it that way as well. Yeah, you see here, so 4 megabytes is 32 megabits. Right, so just uh, divided by 8, 32 divided by 8 is 4, right? And uh, you can go all the way straight down, so 16 megabytes would be 128 megabits. And that's the way these flash chips on this site here are shown. So let's look at a 32 megabit, which was similar to the one we just read out from the Adafruit board, just as an example because we've got that one done and we can look at it. So let's just pick a random one here. So you get a look at this data sheet, you're gonna go down and look for something like the memory, organ yeah, right here. So here we've got sort of a memory map of the chip. Over here is where all the memory is, and it's all divided into these blocks of memory with sectors and so on. And we go all the way to the last address here in memory, which is what, three with five Fs, and I'll pull up a calculator so we can look at that. Okay, so three with one, two, three, four, five, and then we go over to this and we can see what the memory is. So it's not quite four megabytes, it's actually a little bit more than that. In fact, if we go now back over to terminal, because we just completed that one from the Adafruit side, you see right here, compressed, 4194304. Our last address is 4194303. Why is it one less? And that's because your zero location is also a byte. Okay, so the total byte count is this, 304. So that's why when we set this up, we're actually, look at this, in hex it's that, but that's not what we put in. We went from zero to zero hex four with five zeros, not this. So let's add a zero to this, or not add a zero, but add a one to that, and then we go to the hex, and there it is. And so basically what we're doing here when we do the read flash out is from zero to the address we want to go to, up until, right? So, so it's essentially the total number of bytes we're reading out in memory. This is important to do because, you know, if you're doing a full copy of the flash memory, you don't know how much of it is used up. I, and I guess it might work still if you did just read out four megabytes even, but you don't know because you're doing a copy, this is forensics, and you wanna do a full copy of the flash chip. So I thought that was kinda of cool to show. Now let's go to the 128 megabit, which is the 16 megabyte flash chip we have here. And again, just pick a random one. Okay, so now we're reading up until six, uh, F's there in hex. So we'll throw that into the calculator. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, and then we'll add one to that because we're going to read up until that address there. Copy that. Well, we'll go over here. And there you have it. So it would be one with six zeros in hexadecimal is what we're going to put in and read this out. Okay, so let's go now back to the cheat sheet. Okay, so now let's create our um, full command here to read from the trig board. We're going to just copy that. We'll use that port, same baud rate, but instead of from zero to four, we're gonna do one with six zeros. Do I got that right? One, two. Okay, we'll call this trig board back up. Bin. Okay, let's let this rip. Okay, so this is interesting, and uh, I knew this was going to happen. Fatal error has occurred. Corrupt data. Interesting. So for whatever reason, this is not working. It worked fine on the Adafruit, but not on TrigBoard with the external USB to serial converter. 
And what I found is that this is due to the baud rate. So what we're going to do is slow this down. And uh, what speeds are compatible? Well, I always go to the Arduino IDE for this. So let's go to Tools. And you see Upload Speeds. We've got 921, 600. And then we also have 460, 800. So let's try 460, 800 next. Okay, here we go. Fatal error, no good. Okay, what was the next speed? Uh, 230, 400 is the next speed. Let's try that. Here we go. There we go. So not only is this flash memory size four times larger than the Adafruit, but also we have to read it at a much slower baud rate. So this is going to take forever. And the code size might not even be close to the full memory size that we have on the ESP32 there. Uh, but we want to read out every byte out of memory to create this bin file. So this is going to take a long time, but keep in mind that this is only a one-time kind of thing when you're doing a backup. So we'll uh, let this go, and we'll see uh, you back in a few minutes. Oh, and just while that's going, I just, I'll just i show you what that trig board here that we're copying is actually doing. So this was part of a little experiment I had uh, with modified base firmware to wake up every 10 seconds, connect to the Wi-Fi network, and log the RSSI and total on time to a Google Sheet here. And the idea was to see if there is some correlation to total on time to the RSSI. So, you know, the closer a trig board might be to your router, the, you know, the better the signal strength, maybe the faster it could get a connection. Uh, so I have, you know, a whole bunch of trig boards doing this and setting this up, trying to gather this data. But we're going to copy this out, which means we're going to copy out the base firmware that does this, as well as the Wi-Fi settings and uh, the encryption keys to get connected to this Google Sheet. So with the um, factory trig board here, straight from the factory, the ESP32 module is straight from Espressive, totally blank. We're going to duplicate the one you see here. And with any luck, we should see new entries here once we write that back. So a total proof that we are able to duplicate this ESP32. So let's see how we're doing after all that rambling. Yeah, we're going to be here for a while. <laughs> well, we're still reading Flash there, but I wanted to tell you another little story here. So while I was doing this, I thought it would be interesting to try and read out from a memory location way higher than what's even possible here. So what I did was I put in a 2 here instead of a 1, and this worked on this chip. So what happened was is it actually froze right at, because you see here it's actually showing you the byte count. And what was cool is that it actually froze right at this memory location, um, or the to this uh, total byte count, and it just stuck there. So I was thinking that would be kind of cool, like if you had no idea, you couldn't read it out, you didn't know what spy flash chip was used or the, the way the blocks and sectors worked in the chip, so you had no idea. Maybe you could just throw in some huge number and just let it freeze up there and see where it froze at. But then I tried it on the Adafruit board and it just kept reading because some of these spy flash chips, I think, wrap around. So it just kept reading and it read out the huge number and I had this huge bin file. Of course, you know, that wouldn't work to program back to it, so that was kind of useless, but I don't know. Anyway, I thought that was kind of cool. So I'm just sitting here watching the screen, and I was thinking about this, this customer project. It's going to be funny when I send them the boards, and they're already programmed. They're probably going to be like, how did you program the boards? Where did you get the software from? Because they never gave it to me. <laughs> we'll see what happens there. All right, well, that's still going. And I was just thinking about, you know, how a lot of processors that you might work on, uh, it's kind of nice for production. You can do the, the lockout built in. It's very easy to do, but in this case with the ESP32, the Spy Flash chip, if you look under the metal shield, in fact, let's do that just because I'm getting kind of bored of this. Okay. Images. There we go. Eh. Okay, there we go. That's a good picture. So under that metal can there, you can see the actual ESP32 chip is right 
there, oh man, there we go, is right there. This is what we're reading from, the spy flash chip. It's a separate device. So it's not as easy to just put in read protect or flip some bit so you can't read out of it because if you did that, then the ESP32 itself can't read from it. So encrypting this is is a little bit more challenging and I think that would be, make a very cool uh, part two to this whole thing is enabling the spy flash encryption so that the ESP32 here can read from it but we cannot or if we can read from it it's all just garbage data and we can't write it to a new ESP32 so that might be kind of fun to do okay just about there come on there we go all right, just about there. Okay, there we go. So there you have it. Let's pull up the calculator again. And there is the total byte count read out. Matches up nicely with the calculator there, so we're good. And there's the bin file right there. So now, instead of writing it back to the same ESP32 we just read out, let's write it to a fresh ESP32 straight from Espresso, totally blank. There we go. This is the way I receive the trig boards. And let's do this. Okay, so let's create our command now to write this out. So just like before when we were writing to the Adafruit board, we'll just copy that out. Of course, the port is this USB to serial. We can let the baud rate rip at the fastest speed. All of this stuff looks good. Let's grab the path to the new file option. Copy that out. Paste it right there. And let's see what happens. But before I do that, for total proof, let's delete everything out of this sheet here. There we go. So if this works, we should see a new row pop up here. Here we go. Letter rip. At address location zero, the entire bin file, boom. Okay, that's done. Let's hit reset on it. Okay, well I screwed that up, so I gotta do it again. I hit reset before we got a response, a successful response back from the ESP32. So that's no big deal. We'll just do it again. Okay, that took a little while, but uh, after it wrote it, we had to wait for everything to be verified, and then we get the hard resetting via RTS pin. I always wait for this before I do anything. Don't remove power or anything. I just did that up here, and I got uh, a fatal error has occurred in valid head of packet. So I wait for everything to complete. We should be good now. I can hit the reset button. LED turns on, which is good. It's running some code. Is it connecting to the Wi-Fi network? Is it connecting to if this, then that? Is it connecting to Google Sheets? I don't know. Let's go check. Oh, yeah, it is. There we go. Every 10 seconds. So it's reporting again. This is the RSSI and total connection time. And uh, it's working pretty good. So there you go. Okay, I think that was a kind of a long video, but um, hopefully you found that interesting. Lots of good stuff. I think, again, a part two would be to lock it down so you can't read out the flash memory. Or at least if you do read it out, you can't do anything with it because it's all encrypted garbage. Uh, so, anyway, thanks for watching.